Superman of science And he loves to play with fire And the things he'll do You can do If you so desire To try this at home with Mr. T Hello and welcome back to Do Try This at Home This is the show that takes ordinary household items And turns them into something extraordinary I'm your host, Mr. G Well, today... Marks sort of a milestone, or maybe a, a little bit of a sad day for Do Try This at Home. It's our final episode of Do Try This at Home. After two successful seasons of Do Try This at Home, I'm retiring it, and we're going to move on to new and better things. We're going to move on to the Mr. G Show, which will allow me to, to basically show you some things that I don't want you to be, try, to be trying at home. Um, you're probably wondering why I'm here with my friend Scully. Gee, Scully, didn't know you liked me so much. Put your hand back. Say hi to the crowd, Scully. It's getting close to Halloween, one of my favorite times of the year. I love Halloween. And anyways, I'm sitting here with Scully for this nice Halloween-ish episode. And um, yesterday I built something in the morning that I think I'll show you. This will be maybe some of the kind of stuff that we might be doing on the Mr. G Show. So hold on a second here. And let me plug in my new toy. There, it's plugged in. Should start operating here behind me shortly. Or not. There it goes. That's my new toy. That's called a Jacob's Ladder. And basically, it makes with very high voltage with a fair amount of current as well. It makes an arc. It goes between the two tall electrodes there. And the heat of the arc carries it up the electrodes. I love it. Makes a nice ozone smell in the house, too, for Halloween. Anyways, today, like I said, we're going to be building a Gaussian railgun. Scully's taking care of some of my, um, Scully's going to, have you been drinking? Okay, put your hand up. Anyways, today, the Gaussian railgun basically consists of two dowels that are about five-eighths five eighths, five eighths of an inch in diameter, some vinyl electrical tape, a pair of scissors to cut that with, and four neodymium magnets that are in order of north-south pole. Let me make sure of that. Yep, they are. I'm keeping these separated so they don't go banging together and, and ruining our experiment. So um, I'm going to take the two rails or the two, basically the two dowel rods. Ah, yes. Very important ingredient here too. Ball bearings. So I've got some three-eighths inch ball bearings and some quarter-inch ball bearings in there. Um, I've already cut some strips of electrical tape, and here's how we're going to start this little project. We're going to take First time I unplug the Jacob's Ladder, it might be getting kind of annoying in the background. <laughs> Just a joke for Halloween, folks. There we go. Okay. I'm going to take my first piece of electrical tape, and I'm going to take my first magnet, being careful to keep it positioned so the north and south poles are correct, so the magnets attract each other, each to one another. Okay, that's working. That's working because that's the most powerful side of the magnets that will also attract the ball bearings. I'm going to take the piece of electric tape and I'm going to stretch it. I'm going to stretch it so it becomes kind of thinner. I want it to be about the same width as our magnet here. I'm going to take the first magnet and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay that magnet here down in sort of like the channel of the wooden dowels. Now what you have to do is you have to be careful here. Sound. Anyways, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lay the magnet so that it's between the two wooden dowels. And you want it to sort of make a triangular shape. If you're using square magnets, you can use round ones too. They're a little easier maybe. I'm going to make sort of a triangular shape right there. I'm going to tape that together. I need a little bit more electrical tape for this right here. Let me peel some more off. There we go. Oh, I should have used the scissors. That would have been easier on my teeth, huh? We'll see how this is going to look once I get it done here. Should be pretty simple. Use a little extra tape on the first one here. There we go. Okay, basically what I've done is I've got the magnet taped between the two dowels like that. Hope you can see that all right. Now I take the second magnet. I'm going to lay it. Make sure it's the right direction it is. I'm going to lay it sort of like in the channel as well. I'm going to take my second piece of electrical tape here. I'm going to stretch the electrical tape. Whoops, I broke that one. 
Let's keep going though, and let's, let's plot on. And I'm going to take the, this piece of electrical tape and I'm going to place it so that it will hold the magnet also down in this channel here, like that. That'll work. And hold, and so that also helps to hold the dowels together to make our, our channel or our rail. Take my third magnet. Now these magnets are spaced about a hand's width apart, I would say. Take my third magnet. Oops. This electrical tape's a little funny today. And it's maybe a little short, that's why. I'm going to get a little longer pieces. I think I cut my electrical tape a little too short. Here's a piece. Let me cut another piece. There's another piece. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my third magnet and I'm going to tape it to the two dowels, same way, down in the channel like that, just like so. I'm going to get it so it's nice and tight against there. There we go. Just like that. Now I'm going to take my fourth magnet and place it about a hand space apart as well. I'm going to take my other piece of tape and stretching it so that it meets the same width as our magnet. And there we go. I'm going to place it. Whoops. Uh oh. Yeah, I'm not sure which way that magnet goes. How do we find out if we mess up? I'll put my finger here and I'll make sure the magnet is at the point where it has the most pull. We measure that again. Let's start with our tape again. Okay. Go. There we go. That's a little better. Now we're going to tape that last magnet in place right here at the end. There we go. Okay. We've built the rail gun. Now, how do we load the rail gun? What we're going to do is we're going to take our largest ball bearings here. And I'm going to start with this end. Let's take one ball bearing, two, three. Three ball bearings. One, Two, these are all the large ones. Three. One, two, three. One, whoa, two, three. And lastly, I'm going to take a large ball bearing. One. Well, maybe I might use all small ones. Let's check. I'm going to take small ones this time. One, two. I'm going to start with a large one. Large one, and then the small ones. That'll kind of transfer the, the energy a little bit better. We're going to take four small ones this time. Maybe even five. That's fine. At the end. All right, we're going to need one to fire. That's right. Now, what we're going to do to fire the railgun is we're going to take one of the ball bearings, doesn't matter if it's large or small, and we're going to roll it into the first magnet. Now, when that ball bearing rolls in to the first magnet, and actually, boom, it actually hits it, this, mag, this ball bearing will have little, if any, very little um, kinetic energy. Very little kinetic energy. It's going to hit the magnet, which is full of potential energy, and it's going to release its potential energy and make it into kinetic energy, and it's going to hit these three ball bearings. The third one from the magnet is the easiest to separate from. When it separates, it's going to fly at a higher rate of speed, but it's going to suddenly get pulled toward that magnet because of the magnetic force here. Then it's going to separate this one, which will be pulled towards this one. And we have a chain reaction here, folks, of kinetic energy turning potential energy into higher kinetic energy, higher kinetic energy from each load of potential energy in the magnets. So let's give it a shot and see. Give it a shot. Wow, that's pretty funny. Okay. Um, let's start with our can. We're going to put our can at the end here, and let's give it a shot. I'm coming over here, and I'm going to set the ball bearing at the end of the railgun, and I'm going to give it a push. Whoa! It worked. It worked great. Wow. we got to go find our ball bearings now, though. There's one of them. Hopefully, I'll find them all. Whoa, wow, you can put a little dent in the can right here. Look at that. So, pop that back out. Let's, um, let's put our little funny-faced guy in front here. We're going to shoot him. Now, to reload the gun, you're going to notice what happened here. Every magnet that had three ball bearings in front of it now has only two in front of it, but the third one got, got ejected this way. Now I'm going to show you this in slow motion as well. We're going to go like this to load it. You got to push everything back one. So whoops, how that didn't feel good. Three, three, three. Bring this one back here. At the end and two at that end. Okay, we got them all back. Okay, let's start this way this time, folks. I'm going to bring this. Over. Wow, I shot it. We didn't even need to shoot it. There's stuff flying. Stuff is flying everywhere. <laughs> that was a total accidental shot. 
Let's start again. That was funny. This is a lot of fun. You're going to have fun with your railgun. It's so simple and easy to make. It's so quick. Quick and easy to make. Um, didn't mean to shoot the can that time. I'm missing a ball bearing, but that's okay. We'll find that later. We'll probably slip and fall on it. Okay, let's put our little man in front here. Let's see, we got a good shot of him. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Actually, I have a remote to help us with that. Let's try that. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, can we see this all right? I don't know, let's find out. You see that all right? Yeah, I think that'll work. I think that's working, let's look. Oh yeah, that looks good. Okay, sorry, I had to go look at my little screen a little bit better. I actually need to get a monitor, that would be helpful. Okay, let me take this last one off here, let me load it again. Okay, ready? Little man's gonna get nailed. Let's put this cup behind him so he goes right into that cup. This gun is a lot of fun. Here we go, and give it a push. Whoa, off he goes, that was cool. All right, well, that's the Gaussian Railgun. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna move the camera to another angle and we're going to show it in action, and then I will make it in slow motion so that you can see exactly what happened. Have a great Halloween. I'm Mr. G. This is the last episode ever of Do Try This at Home, but stick around for the Mr. G Show. You'll see more cool, fun things, like my Jacob's Ladder that I showed you earlier. I hope you all had a lot of fun today. See you later. It's Halloween night, or day, or whatever you want to call it, here on Do Try This at Home. Halloween night? No, it's not Halloween. Halloween's coming. Okay, start it. I can't believe you're this star. <laughs> I'll never get this video shot if I don't these magnets apart. There. Ooh. Oh, crap. Jeez! Ow! Never enough time in a day. It's getting really close to Halloween, one of my favorite holidays. Today, we are going to... Boy, I screwed that up. I don't know... I don't know what we're going to do today. Today, we're going to take these... Uh, these... wooden dowels, and we're going to bang ourselves in the head with it to knock some sense into it. Man, my ice barrier tuner and I got screwed up shortly because it's becoming kind of annoying. And the ozone smell from it is starting to make my head hurt. <laughs> that was great. I bet I scared the crap out of a lot of people out there. Probably thought old Mr. G was going to be Gonsville. But I'll tell you what. Like I say, a bad hair day is every day. No. Scully, will you please sit up? This skeleton is like the worst prop. But before we get started, I want to talk to you a little about. I want to have that to dab to dab to dab a deep. Thinking I'm kill you. <laughs> Just kidding.